Hi and welcome again. Now we're up to chapter 8 in this Bio 100 class for the life cycle of the cell, mitosis and meiosis. This is where things can get a little confusing so I'll try to take my time. I'll go through it specifically and there are supplemental videos that I've posted on Blackboard that would benefit you greatly if you took the time to really watch them. In this PowerPoint, uh, just for a brief rundown of what we're going to go over, first we're going to look at a basic, the basic life cycle of a cell. It's got two main phases, interphase and then the mitotic phase. These overall can be broken down into five individual stages of each. I will give you a slide for some vocabulary that many students find difficult. This will be an important thing to keep in mind, the differences between some of the words we, that I will be using. I'll give you some background information on the processes on the process of mitosis before we actually dive into each stage of it and then we will be on our way and running through mitosis. This is the production of more body cells. Body is or uh, you may hear it called somatic cells. Mitosis occurs during the M phase of a cell's life cycle and there are five stages during this M phase where seven different things happen. To go into the cell cycle, as I mentioned before, there are two main phases. The first one is interphase, the second one is the mitotic phase. Interphase can be broken into several steps, mainly G1, S, and G2. I'll talk more about that in a moment. The mitotic phase can be broken into the five specific phases of mitosis. So looking at the cell cycle, this is an overall picture. I've included two different slides here uh, just to give a better visual representation. Starting in the lower left hand section of the screen, this is, let's just call it the beginning phase of the cell, G1. This is the initial growth phase where the cell is growing, just simply making more cell along the stages of maturing. It'll go through this stage until it gets a particular signal to begin what is called the S phase and during this phase this is when the cell puts energy towards reproducing its DNA uh, basically making a copy of every strand of DNA within the nucleus so S phase one way to remember it is called the synthesis phase chromosome duplication that's when your chromosomes this is a chromosome and this is a chromosome, even though you're more familiar with probably seeing them paired or doubled like this. Uh, each individual chromosome turns into two. There are two copies of it. And from here, this is when the cell goes through G2. That's basically the second growth phase. This is where it starts making more cell, more organelle parts in preparation for mitosis, just to make sure it has everything that it's going to need to eventually become two cells. The actual division process occurs in what is called the mitotic phase. So it's important to understand that G1, S, and G2 are all interphase. All of this is interphase. And then down here, the mitotic phase is a very short period in comparison to the cell's life cycle. I include this picture because I like how it's more of a pie chart. It's easier for me to visualize the different amounts of time, even though there's not like, you know, it spends 10 seconds in G1 and 25 seconds in S. No, that's, we don't have anything specific like that. Uh, but I think it's easier to understand uh, the different stages and how G1, S, and G2 are a part of interphase, where the mitotic phase is very short. Uh, one chunk for mitosis, the actual steps that are involved in that, and then one chunk for the final stage of mitosis called cytokinesis. And right here is basically displaying how one cell becomes two. And the way it's, what it's typically called is that one cell forms two daughter cells in mitosis. So interphase, We've, I've talked about it a little bit. Most of a cell's life is spent in interphase where it is growing. Initially, it grows right after it has been formed once it was a daughter cell from a previous mitotic division it does its growth phase i correlate that to like uh in a human life cycle going from being a baby to just about puberty let's let's call it that where 
the S phase, when a cell starts copying its DNA, I call that puberty in a human life cycle, uh, where essentially your gonads are preparing to do the reproduction part. And then the secondary growth phase, uh, at G2, in a cell, um, for a human life cycle, I'll call that, if we look specifically at females, that would be the time spent for a female when she's pregnant, creating, waiting to become two individuals, preparing, uh, generating all that, all of the additional proteins and body components uh, to eventually become two individuals, where here in G2, that really comes down to making more mitochondria, more endoplasmic reticulum, more cytoplasm, more membrane. Um, it's, it's a rough, rough suggestion, but maybe that's a way to think about a cell's life cycle. So as we go into mitosis, it's going to be very important to keep in mind the differences, the different stages that your DNA or that DNA will exist in and the different names that it will be called. Chromatin is the term used for DNA when it is still very loose, not compacted in the forms that you're familiar seeing. A chromosome is always the term for the section of DNA that when compacted forms a specific size and shape. A chromosome can refer to one sister chromatid or after DNA has been copied it can refer to the both of them when they are connected by the centromere. I have pictures after this slide, don't worry. So next I just mentioned a chromatid. That is a term for when DNA has replicated itself and it, the two copies are connected to each other with a centromere, each individual copy is called a chromatid. They're called sister chromatids. Here's one picture to kind of give you an idea. This is a sister chromatid like we just mentioned. This is the centromere where this is one copy of a chromosome. This is, a sec this is the secondary copy of the chromosome. Oftentimes when they are still paired together it's called a chromosome even though this individual chromatid, once it is pulled from its other copy and resides in a new cell by itself, it's also called a chromosome. I hope I didn't confuse you. Chromosome, sister chromatid, centromere. This picture you've seen, but it's awesome, so I want you to see it again. When you're looking at this part here, this is the chromatin chromatin when it's the loose DNA as it would exist in the nucleus in, during interphase during that stage of a cell's life. Then when it begins to coil tightly and more tightly this is a picture of a duplicated chromosome. Each individual side is a sister chromatid. There's the centromere where, where they are connected. So we've covered what you need to know about the life cycle of the cell, and we're going to start going into the first few phases of mitosis. So initially, the cell has gone through the S phase. It has copied all of, the, all of the DNA. It's got two copies of every chromosome. And then it goes through its G2 phase, where the cell is preparing to divide. Now mitosis begins. And what happens? Those centrioles that we talked about that are only in animal cells, not plant cells, come into play. They become pairs, they're called, which are called centrosomes. So there's some of them, centrosome versus centriole. And they begin to move to either side of the cell. And at this stage, this is when the chromatin fibers start to condense. So this this is the first step before really anything happens. Now stepping into prophase, these, this is the first stage of mitosis. In the very beginning you'll see the initial stages of the spindle where the centrosomes are starting to move to opposite poles of the cell and you'll begin to see or you'll start to be able to see DNA making its tight coils. You see how it just looks opaque in this picture and you can actually see the squiggles of the DNA here. It's coiling up into that common form that we uh, see in chromosomes, more of the X structure. 
So prophase in your book is split into two sort of initial stages. In one of the videos you're going to see, they call it prophase and prometaphase. This would be the first one would be prophase and the second one would be prometaphase, but that's okay. Just know that during prophase, the centrosomes move to either pole. The chromosomes become visible. They start to pair up as two sister chromatids and the nuclear envelope fragments basically comes apart. The microtubules from the centrosomes begin to attach to the centromere of each chromosome. And you can see that happening here. You see the green lines, they look like threads that are connecting to the centromere of each of these completely coiled chromosomes. So moving on from prophase is metaphase. This phase is very distinct because it's where each of these microtubules are equally tugging on the centromere of your duplicated chromosomes and all of the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. They line up along the middle. That's metaphase. There is an imaginary line here that uh, in biology is called a metaphase plate. That's what I always use to help me remember which phase is the phase where things line up because that's where there's a metaphase plate. So moving on from metaphase, oh, I am sorry, going back into metaphase, I forgot to mention how the formation of the microtubules here are what they call the spindle. In metaphase, the spindle is fully formed. Now going to anaphase, this is the step where the duplicated chromosomes are ripped apart by the microtubules and they, the sister chromatids are essentially separated and then the microtubules in the middle of the cell elongate, pushing the centrosomes further apart. And this is part of what allows that cell to divide into two. And if you watch some of the videos, this is one of the most amazing parts to see. It happens so quickly where these threads pull the chromosomes apart. Telophase is next. That's the stage where the nuclear envelope begins to redevelop. And then cytokinesis is the stage where a cleavage furrow develops and the cell essentially pinches off into two. Interphase is the phase where a cell spends most of its life just growing and if it goes into the S phase, duplicating its chromosomes, if it goes into G2, preparing for mitosis. Starting mitosis is prophase and this is where the DNA become visible in a light microscope. The two centrosomes appear and begin to form a spindle as the centrosomes move to d opposite poles of the cell. This is still prophase where the centrosomes are connecting to the centromere of the chromosomes and moving to opposite sides of the cell. Metaphase, meta in the middle, let's meet in the middle. That's where the chromosomes line up along the center of the cell before they're going to be pulled apart into what will eventually be the two individual cells. After metaphase, anaphase is when the chromosomes are pulled to opposing ends and the nuclear envelope begins to redevelop. Telophase actually is really where the nuclear envelope begins to re redevelop and then cytokinesis is where the one cell finally becomes two based on that cleavage furrow. In animal cells, cytokinesis begins with the formation of a cleavage furrow. At the site of the furrow, a ring of microfilaments contracts, much like the pulling of drawstrings. The cell is pinched in two creating two identical daughter cells. In plant cells, cytokinesis begins when vesicles containing cell wall material collect in the middle of the cell. The vesicles fuse, forming a large sac called the cell plate. The cell plate grows outward until its membrane fuses with the plasma membrane, separating the two daughter cells. The cell plate's contents join the parental cell wall. The result is two daughter cells, each bounded by its own continuous plasma membrane and cell wall. And so there you have plant cells. I just want to show you this because I think the, the picture is absolutely amazing, very, very uh, clear in visually expressing what a cleavage furrow would look like. Kind of like they said, like a drawstring being pulled around some oil. So what happens in mitosis? You have your initial cell which divides into two identical daughter cells. These cells are just like the cell that started with it. Same number of chromosomes, same construction, pretty much just the same. 
Well, I want to show you these slides so that you can have a written form of everything that happens through the stages of mitosis, uh, IPMATC, however you need to remember that. Interphase is the stage before the mitotic phase. There are basically two phases of a cell's life, interphase and mitotic. Interphase is cell growth, G1, S, and G2. Prophase is where centrosomes move apart to form the spindle, DNA is copied, and forms the common looking X shape that you're used to, like sister chromatids, and then late in prophase the nuclear envelope comes apart and microtubules attach to the centromere of the chromosomes, preparing to rip them apart. After prophase is metaphase, this is very very easy, metaphase in the middle, where the chromosomes line up in the middle and uh, microtubules are getting ready to rip them apart. In anaphase is when the sister chromatids are separated and pulled to different sides of the cell. Then finally, telophase. Once the chromosomes are at each end, they begin to unwind and the nuclear envelope redevelops. Then cytokinesis is the final step that divides that one cell into two. Now what we've talked about is the cell life cycle where there are two main phases, interphase, and the mitotic phase. Those can be broken down into five total phases where interphase is essentially made up of three and the mitotic phase is essentially made up of two different steps. So the three steps of interphase are G1, S, and G2. And then the mitotic phase is basically mitosis and cytokinesis. There are several different ways that they describe cytokinesis, but it is final. That's when w one cell ceases to be one cell. We've gone over the vocabulary. Be sure to read the definitions in the back of your book for any words that you have questions on. And then uh, as we went through mitosis, uh, PMATC, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis.